So like 2018, that year, I sold between all four companies, I sold $75,000 of life insurance premium. I made about $60,000 that year, Jeez. okay? 2019, I sold 425,000. I was the same person. Yeah. I didn't change, all I do is I changed my thoughts. I changed my mindset, I changed my behaviors, and I did the fundamentals. I took my ego out of the business. Hey, welcome back to the CA Power Players Podcast. I'm your host, Cody Askins. I'm here in studio live in Springfield, Missouri, and I got a crazy special guest today. I'm going to spit some numbers before I even go and show you who this cat is, okay? Um, he's been in the business about five years, and his story, what he's accomplished, ridiculous. This will be one of the best interviews we've ever done, okay? Also, um, his second full year ever in the business produced over 425,000, which is nuts. He knows a thing or two, and... One of his best years ever was 600000 on his own pin. Please welcome to the Power Player Podcast, Mr. Greg Birch. Thank you so much, Cody, for having me on, man. I appreciate it. You got it, man, it's dude. It's my pleasure. I've been admi- I, dude, I've admired you from afar. We, we, we haven't seen each other in, I don't know, three and a half, four years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 20, 2019. Yeah. It was like, was it January, February? Something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was just nuts. It's almost been four years. Um, you've accomplished a lot. I, I see you everywhere, you know, but I've been following you. I admire, you know what I think about Greg Birch, okay? Um, and I want you guys to help me out today. As you listen to this interview, jump in comments and be like, okay, here's what I think of this cat, okay? You, you, you seem like somebody that is super competitive. Yeah. <laughs> tenacious, yeah. I think is a good word. And that will do anything with an ethical reason to win. Yeah, it's pretty accurate. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty yeah, accurate, <laughs> right? Which reminds me a lot of me. Yeah. Reminds me a lot of my dad. I mean, and this is—I uh, think that's awesome, man. I mean, not everybody's born with that. Um, and we'll get to some of the numbers, some training. Greg's going to share a whole bunch of stuff. We, we may go—we may go a whole hour today. We'll see. We got time. Um, I would love for you to share for those that don't know you, dude. Who is Greg Birch? Where did he? Where did this? Where did this cat come from? Yeah. Where you, you, have you lived in Dallas forever? T- tell us about you, man. So, um, you know, I, I grew up in Tennessee, actually. I'm a, believe it or not, a six foot seven, half Puerto Rican that grew up in Tennessee. My wow. mom's Puerto Rican, yeah. <laughs> you never guess it. Speak Spanish? Uh, un poquito. Okay. So, that sounds like something I would say. All yeah. Right. <laughs> you just, you say it a little better than me, though. So, so, um, you know, I was raised by a military family. I, from a young age, I wanted to go in the military. I knew I did. And, mm. and, uh, I wanted to actually be an officer and, you know, I will say, I believe in the power of uh, of manifestation, like the law of attraction, no uh, active visualization. Because um, the first time I ever did it, and I didn't even know I was doing it, is I used to have this um, this vision of myself as a captain mm. in the army um, when I was about eight years old. From that, the time is eight to twelve, yes. and I would play the. Uh, my mom had a old had an old record player. And she, she, we had this old shrunk that she got from Germany. She had this record player in it with these massive speakers. Yeah. And um, I would play Queen, We Are the Champions. Ah, uh, let's go. On repeat. I would keep going back and like yes. getting the record back and, and I'd play it over and over again. And I had this vision, this very, very clear vision that over the years it, it manifested and it got, it got clearer and clearer mm. and, and more detailed. And it was me as a captain. Uh, receiving an award during the spring it was sunny like we're out in the field there were soldiers there and I was receiving some award and it was from war and so um, I just had I just knew I wanted it so bad right because I my dad was yeah. enlisted and my dad used to talk about this captain so um, man sure as hell I uh, you know I, I, I got a ROTC scholarship and my senior year of high school uh, went full ride went to ROTC and uh, commissioned uh, I did make it to captain. I did get, I got two bronze star medals, um, two different appointments. And so, Jeez. yeah, man, I made it happen. So, and I didn't know it wow. then. I didn't know it then. But looking back, knowing what I know now, the power of, of yes. you know, active visualization and, and manifestation is, is very real. Yeah. So, I think a lot of people can relate to that too. Like if you think about, um, I was thinking, I was talking to, I was talking the other day to a team of like 85 agents. And I was talking about, if you think about the most successful people in the world, Mm-hmm. Um, 
a lot of them, I don't know what it was, something happened in childhood that made them believe they were going to be super successful later in life. Maybe not to the degree they were, but they just knew that they were going to do something cool, something yes. big. Um, they had a lot of beliefs, wherever that comes from. Um, you saw this, but you also had to put, and I think this is a piece of people forget, you also have to put a lot of action in place. Right? Yes, you, yeah. You, you had to do a lot. You had to stand out. You're in the military, right? Yeah. Um, where, where you said you were um, uh, deployed twice, right? Yeah, I was deployed to both Iraq and then Afghanistan. How was that? Man, I loved it. Yeah? I mean, I got... I got attacked, you know, <laughs> in, yeah. in Iraq more than Afghanistan. Um, blown up a couple times, rocketed, mortared, um, shot at, mm. you know, a handful of times. You know, what's that, that feeling like? I, I've never been shot at. Um, it, it it is a very surreal experience. Um, time almost slows down. Mm. Um, it's so the first time we ever got attacked, we were actually. Um, I was in the Kirkuk province in Iraq. And so we were in the process, we had this program called um, the Sons of Iraq. And what it was was as a, a militia that was paid for by the US government. So we paid random Iraqi citizens and we put checkpoints, checkpoints every single mile on every single stretch of road in our entire area of operations. Wow. And we put people inside of there so that they could basically stand there and look up and down the road and see if anybody was trying to dig up ground and put an IED in mm. and if the, somebody did and it was between two checkpoints like we know we know who's dirty so like it was a it was actually a pretty good system so we had to I was the money guy I gave out millions of dollars in my dude when I was in Iraq I mean now that sounds fun millions I was the money they call me shake floose because I was the money guy uh -huh. is money and I would I made a big production about it because I would always have like a big old uh, a big old duffel bag on my back and when I came in town with a duffel bag that means shake floose was in town and we were was like shake floose like, <laughs> like that's ridiculous <laughs> people would come out like like was out of grass all kind of stuff oh my god so <laughs> this was more money than anybody over there has ever seen oh yeah Right? Yeah, this is like a massive amount of money. Can you say how much or no? Um, so the first time, the first shipment that we that we gave out was okay. like ten million Iraqi dinar, which is how much U.S. Man, it's been a while since I've done that calculation. I want to say it's probably close to a million Iraqi yeah. or a million U.S. Okay, all right, keep going. I'm gonna look so, it up. So, um, when, when we when we first, I think it's a ten, ten to one. Uh, when we first, um got on ground, they there was a transition period of like three months trying to get to where I had to get the security clearance and everything to get all this money. Yep. So it was like three months worth of waiting that we okay. had to, then when the paperwork got approved, we had to get all the back pay because they were working without pay. So we had this huge party and we we're like, hey, the pay finally came in. We talked to the main guy. Now the main guy was, he was like the godfather, like he was dirty. Mm. Um, his, um, his name is Mullah Majid. Super dirty guy. So he, um, you know, sets up, a, he, and he's got this massive mansion that's like right off the river, right off the Tigris. And uh, we we go up. I mean, he's got people there. He's got servants cooking for us. There, and there's, I mean, tons of people that are Jeez. waiting to get their money. So we're sitting there handing out money. We do all the stuff. We have to get their Tascara number, which is kind of like a social security number. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole process of like, they have to go line by line by line to get the money. So once it's set up, I'm like, hey, you guys want to go walk around the town? Like, cause there's nothing else to do. We're waiting for food to get cooked. And so I was like, well, let's go walk down to the market. We'll go get some drinks or something. So we walk, we grab up some Iraqi police yep. and we're like, hey, let's go roll. I take my interpreter and uh, me and like a platoon of guys go down. And so uh, I, th I think I had just been promoted to captain. I was like just promoted to captain. <laughs> so wow. I remember because I was like, I was feeling a little froggy. So That's we go down, we walk down through the town. We go to, we go get some, what they called fizzy bubbly, which is like basically like Fanta, but okay. it's like Iraqi Fanta. Okay. So it's, <laughs> Got you. but we called it fizzy bubbly and the, and the Iraqi police knew what the hell we're talking about. Cause they didn't speak any English. But if I said fizzy bubbly, they're like, ah, yeah, fizzy bubbly. Yeah. And then, <laughs> like, ah, nice. And so they get all excited. So we go down, we buy him some drinks. We walk through the town. We walk all the way down to the edge of town and we turn around, we come back through. And when we're coming back through, 
the market was like bustling. There was people everywhere. There was like people literally like selling roasted chickens on the street. Mm. And it's like, I mean, it's third world, but it's like yeah. people are all there. We come back through, it's a ghost town. There is not a single soul there. Wow. <laughs> and I literally looked over my uh, the, the platoon leader and I was like, bro, this is just like in training when they said like, hey, be wary of an attack when you see like the, the town's gone away. Yeah. And right as I said that, it was like, we hear a ding, 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 threw a grenade. We were able to like, kind of like, just like basically push it as quickly as it can because it landed right by uh, the lieutenant and I. And uh, duck just before it exploded. And that's when the gunfire started. And there was, it was like three teenagers. Um, wow. We didn't learn till afterwards, but it was three teenagers that were shooting at us. So. Um, everything happens so fast in the military. You do things. Well, it's called um, it's called um, uh, uh, battle drills. Okay. And and basically the battle drills designed to to take out thought. You do it so much yeah. that in the fog of war, which is real, when you kind of lose your head, you just act mm. and you act off of instinct. And so um, one of them is called react to contact. And it's like, hey, what happens when you get fired at? There are specific actions that you do. And you do it so many times that like you could do it in your sleep, you know? So it's like, it's not even like, oh, I did it 10 times a day. It's like, I did it a thousand times today. And like, I'm so exhausted from doing this, right? And so we were just very big about doing our battle drills over and over again. That's always been a big deal with me. And that's when people look at special forces, Delta Force, Navy SEALs, any of them, what makes them so exceptional is that they've mastered these battle drills to such a high level yep. because they do them so often mm. that they can do them so quick. And it's like looking at Michael Jordan, say, well, I love Michael Jordan and yes. the, the example of him. You know, when he practiced before a game, he practiced chess passes. He practiced the basics, those fundamentals, yep. those battle drills for him mm. because he wanted to be able to like, hey, whenever someone gave, gave him a, a chess pass, he had he already had his feet in a position ready for a jump shot That's good. before any other person. And so I was always big with my team and my company at the time. Let's we're gonna practice these battle drills until we're so sick of it that we could become great at it, right? Yes. Um so many people ignore the fundamentals too. Or or yeah. it also like how much did that help you a translate lot, actually, to this? I'll, I'll, <laughs> Initially, not well. Yeah. Initially, not well. So, going what were into the insurance. pieces? Yeah. What were the pieces where you're like, ah, this is actually not translating well, and then later you realized. So, what didn't translate well was my ego. Okay. Because I came out of the military with like, dude, I was a captain in the United States Army. I, w- I was actually captain promotable. I got selected for major. So At I could. What age? Um, um, when I got out, I was thirty-two. Okay. Well, dude, I mean, to, to, to move up at captain and yeah. all that in a young age, man. I mean, yeah, it makes sense. Because I got I got in at 22. I just I was 21, 22 when I got in, so I was 32, about to be 33 when I got out. Yeah. And so, you know, I had I had its ego, right? And I was and I came out with like, you know, just looking at the people that I was in the insurance industry with when I first started, like my office, I was just like. <laughs> These are a bunch of monitor liquors. Like I could, I could outperform all these dudes, right? Correct. And um, and I really didn't. And it was my ego. It, it, and they outperformed me. Mm. And it was because, well, for the most part, I mean, I outperformed a lot of people. But sure, sure. there was in the long term with the consistency factor, they outperformed me because they followed basic fundamentals. And when you have ego in business, you neglect because you think that you're so good that you don't have to do that. You know, so good. you know, you think that talent is gonna beat the scale and it's not. And I wasn't that talented. Yeah. It was just I thought I was. Yeah. You know. So mm. and, and that's what that's what didn't really translate. You know, I came out thinking, you know, because there's a very small percentage of the population that ever becomes an officer. It's like less than one percent of the population has ever been an officer in the wow. history of the United States. Wow. Um and then on top of that I've earned two bronze star medals. I've deployed yep. I've I've led troops in combat effectively. You know, I've done all this great stuff. It's just like, and I've, I've done some really cool stuff. Like in Afghanistan, I was, yeah. um, I was a, uh, I, re- I managed an interrogation facility. Mm. You know, I, I switched over to human intelligence and did interrogations and source operations. And it was, I had an awesome time. Wait Afghanistan. till he interviews you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, point to the camera. Yeah. <laughs> so I, um, 
you know, I was in I was in plain clothes for Afghanistan for periods of time. I was like growing a beard and <laughs> like doing some really cool stuff. Yeah. You know, I worked with multiple three letter agencies. I made relationships because they were doing the same kind of stuff. So it was really awesome. You know. Cool. So I come out of that, I get out, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> I got an ego. Right. Well, I mean, and you're going to sit with some boring old people that are selling insurance forever, and you're like, "What the heck is this?" You yeah. Know? How do you? I got, I got already got a bazillion questions, but how did you find insurance? Oh, dude. <laughs> so I'm sure some agents know what I'm talking about, but you know, you do, Indeed, you can't really put commission sales on Indeed. Right. So there's companies out there that will like make a fake company. It's frowned upon, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, frowned upon, but yeah. they'll make a fake company. And um, I found a sales leading to management position with some financial firm that when I Googled could not find. Mm. But it said it was 60 to 90K starting, depending upon experience. And I'm like, I got a ton of management experience. That's right. And I'm pretty good at sales. If I can sell terrorists on giving me information, why not? Amen to like, that. and so um, I, I applied. Sent my I sent my resume, and they responded right away. And they're like, "Hey, we love your resume. We'd like you to come in for an interview." Like mm. it was like within minutes. So I was like, "Yes, score. This is great." Yeah. And uh, showed up to the interview. It was a group interview for a captive insurance company. When I when I sat Got down, it. I was like, "What in the hell is this?" And I, but for some reason, I stayed there. And I, and I sat through everything, I listened to everything, and I kept an open mind, and I just looked around at everyone, and I saw everyone that worked there, they had nice fitted suits, they were wearing nice watches, they drove nice cars. So nice cars like, in the parking lot. Nice cars in, in the parking yep. lot, and I walked in, and I was like, yeah, there's something to this. Mm. If these guys are making money, I'm, I can make money here. They're like a boiler room type, uh, the movie, to, like the, you know, type, type, like environment, right? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of cubicles. When we walked in, it was all yeah. these cubicles and where people could sit and call, dial. And so, um, I went through the interview and I, and I got to pick one of the guys I wanted to be the team I wanted to be on. He was also prior enlisted. He was a prior, uh, NCO. And so I sat with him and he was like, dude, I want you on my team, you know, cause we're all, we're both prior army. So I was like, dope That's right awesome. let's, let's do this That's cool. and so and i actually liked working with him he was a good dude he was a really yep. good dude um he, and he taught me a lot about and, and we, i mean we strictly did final expense there i mean yep. in, in in supplemental policies cancer policies stuff like that so yes um that so was in 2017 you were there and you did i think you said you did 57k in your uh, first two months yeah so in, premium. in november and december the final two months of the year i did fifty seven thousand. And there was a, it was the final quarter of 2017. It was just competition between all the brand new agents that were, had been uh, two years or less. Yes. And um, I got the number one agent in the entire company. Hmm. Um, they gave me a football with my name on it and uh, get, took some pictures with me and with the, with the president and CEO of the company. And That's cool. um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I owed a lot of it to some help that I got from my upline time, the manager yes. I was talking about. Yes. Um, he was he was like, hey, I'm going to set you up with these appointments. Like, I want you to win this. I, yeah. He was like, I want our team to win this. He was like, I want our office to win this for the company. Like, this is going to be massive. But he was like, you're the guy. So mm. he helped me. Uh, you know, I set appointments too, but he was setting appointments with me. He was going on his appointments. That's awesome. I remember the first appointment I ever sat with. First time I sat, I went to her work. She was in a, she uh, worked at a salon. She did nails and hair. And um, first thing I sat down, she was like, if you're selling anything, I ain't buying. Mm. And uh, I was with my, my manager and he was like, he was like, all right, awesome. I sold anything then. And then he just started talking. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And she ended up buying. She ended up buying. And then she called her husband over. Her husband came over and bought. And then she called her sister. Her sister came over and bought. But and she it, is not buying. Nothing. But she wasn't buying. Let this nothing. be a lesson to that. Okay. What what was your first thought? Because you, you was your first thought was like she's like sits down and I buy thing is like, oh crap. Or yeah. was it like, I kind of understand this already. Um, the first thought was when she said that, I was like, oh man, this is going to be a waste. And we Got drove, it. we drove, this was like in Katy, Texas. So oh, we wow. Drove, we drove. That's down near Houston. Yeah. Oh no, it was, it wasn't, it wasn't as far as Katy, but it was like near Katy. Yeah. That's a long way. So yeah. it was, it was like an hour and a half drive. 
from where I was. And I was in the south end of, of Dallas. I was Got in it. Cedar Hill. So I remember driving there and being like, this better be good. Yeah. I better like, and he's like, oh, he's like, I'm going with you. Don't even worry about it. We're going to get this. It's awesome. It's better be good. He gave I, you a lot of confidence just because he had confidence. And he, we, we show up and she's like, yeah, hey, mine. I was like, man, all that gas wasted for nothing. This mm. sucks, you know? And I'm, and, but I watched him. He just very smoothly, very calmly, just keeps talking, keeps talking. And next thing you know, it's like one, two, three sales. And then she's like linking us up with the salon owner. And we're like, hey, can we come back and talk to all the other, um, you know, people that work here? Wow. And and maybe do enrollments for all them. And we did. We ended up doing that eventually. That's cool. And he was just very calm about it. Like, and, and I saw like, okay, that's, this is what sales is. Yeah. So. Yeah. So you, um, before we jump to the next kind of piece puzzle piece in the story okay uh you said something earlier that i was thinking about a lot um do you think that because there's like kind of relating to your story where you had some ego and you're like i don't know if this is gonna you know I, i'm better than all these people you know i'll figure it out whatever whatever the thought was mm -hmm. um there's also a lot of individuals in the business that have had prior success mm -hmm. but that was like a decade ago Five, you know what I mean? It was like, oh, but but they keep talking about it now, yeah. and they come interview with Greg Birch, and they're like, bro, I, I, like, give me the top comp. I'm the band. Like, I, you know, twelve years ago I was at Verizon. I made 130 grand, or like, you know, you know, all this stuff, right? They got all these stories, like this past stuff. Mm. Um, what do you think when you talk to people like that? Um, this is, this is my, my honest thoughts is like, I don't care what you did a year ago, two years ago, five years ago. I don't care how great you were. Correct. It doesn't matter. It all matters is what you're doing today, period. Yeah. Um, discipline can be lost as mm -hmm. easily, in fact, easier than you can gain it. Yes. Um, and the second that you start thinking, like, I've made it, I'm good. Like, I, I, you're I'm, sliding. You are literally, you are starting to dig a rut. That's right. And the only difference between a rut and a grave is the different is the depth of the hole. Mm. Dang. So, wow, I never heard that. Yeah, you're just waiting to die. Dude, that sucks. That's good, but that's terrible. It's um, a, but it's the truth. It's, it's, it's yeah. the honest truth. Yeah, um, and I've been, and here's the thing is I've been there. I've been there. I've been to yes. the point, like I had a great year in 2019 where um, I had a I had an eye-opening realization at the end of 2018 that made me really focus on fundamentals. I took my ego out of the business. And what were some of those fundamentals before, as we transitioned to 2019, which yeah, is yeah. a big year for you? So, so 2018, I jumped between two captive companies and two IMOs. So I was like hopping mm. and popping. So I've been that age of like, oh, it's not working here. I'm going elsewhere. <laughs> What's your thought on that? Because you, you did it. Yeah, I did it. Um, it. It's, you know, and I believe me, I had success, a modicum of success every single place. It wasn't like I went somewhere, didn't sell. There, there's two types of agents, right? There's the agent that will jump because of, you know, certain factors. Let's say it's, hey, my comp's really low and I'm not making enough money. Or like, hey, the lead sources are drying up and I have no other lead sources here. You are selling, you're having success. Then there's the people that just jump just to jump because they're yeah. they, they get there they think if i'm with this team on this with this person this person that's being super successful all of a sudden their success is going to transmit through osmosis to me and i'm going to be and they haven't had it yet and they haven't had it yet yeah, yeah, and then yeah, they yeah. and then they sit there and they do nothing yeah. and then they don't sell and they're like this sucks what's I like thought, i thought you were going to help I, me i thought my upline was going to help me and it's just, dude you guys you guys gotta start taking responsibility for your life amen you gotta start taking responsibility for your life. And yes. the, the reason you are where you are, if you're not having a success that you don't wanna have, is because of the actions that you're doing on a daily basis and stop. No doubt. You don't, like life doesn't happen to you, it doesn't happen for you, it happens because of you. And if where you are is a direct reflection of all the acts, your past actions that led to that point. Correct. Like you are the reflection of yes. your past decisions. Now the good thing is that at any time you can change, you can click that lever in your mind and you can be like, hey, you can literally become a different person right now. Mm -hmm. And then all the actions going forward will create a future vision of who you want to be. And so, it's good. Um, so good. You know, you have those two different dichotomies. Yep. You know, I was an economy where I was having success. I was changing for a reason. Yep. Like the first captive company, 
um, they actually went back on a deal that they made with me because I hit all these metrics in order to get promoted. I got I don't, promoted. You quick. don't seem like a person that flies with you. It does not fly. It does not fly at all. It doesn't fly with me either. And so I was supposed to become an agency director because I hit all the metrics. But my agency director, who was the guy that I started working with, if I would left, I was his top producer. He would have like taken all of his income. Mm. And they were like, well, we're going to keep here a little bit longer. And I was like, no, bro. The standard's the standard. Here's what I got to do. Here's the time frame. I did it. Let's go. Correct. Wasn't, wasn't good with it. So mm. I started looking at different places. Um, went to another captive company. I left there because the comp was so ridiculously low. Yeah, it was really bad. I was twenty five percent. So b- before anyone goes and tells me, it's like, oh, I can't get one hundred and twenty, dude. I was twenty five percent comp for months, so I don't want to hear it. And yes. I lived, and I lived just fine. I could have lived better, but um, then I went independent, and I I was there for four or five months, maybe, um, and I was doing. Only mail leads. This is the first time I ever worked any leads. Mm. First time I ever even knew about mail leads. Didn't even know about them. Didn't even know what mortgage protection was. In fact, wow. mortgage protection, when I first told, got told mortgage protection was, it blew my mind. Because I was so used to having a final expense policy yeah. with a term writer mm. with, uh, oh, also get a cancer policy, right? O- yes. Or like a critical illness policy that's like separate. What was about mortgage protection that really stood out to you? I was like, you can get one policy. You can get one policy that has it all rolled up together. Uh, I'm like, (laughs) like, what's going on here? That's cool. Because I was, I didn't know what I didn't know, and I only knew two companies that were captive, and they don't. They're not like, oh, there's all kinds. They're not teaching you about the insurance industry. They're just teaching you. They would rather not. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. And 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 at the time. YouTube has is different now. So you can go on YouTube and you can type in insurance and you can get so much content. So yeah. it didn't exist like that in 2018. Yep. That's it, right. It wasn't it wasn't it, there was nothing. I only had a couple thousand subs in 2018. Yeah, so it's yeah. Yeah, so it was it was I could I mean I was looking up stuff. I I didn't know what to trust and so um you know, I, I was at that company for a while but mail started drying up and that was the only lead source and so I started looking at leads and I got a contact from another IMO that was like, hey, we got we got these Facebook leads. We get these Facebook leads for and they're super cheap. And and I, fast. and I ignored it. I ignored it. Mm. Cause I really liked working at this other IMO, like the people I worked with. But then the leads started coming up and it, it, at some point it's like I need I need a way to generate money. This is the lifeblood of my business. Yeah. And I literally just res- responded. It was on LinkedIn. I was like, hey, man, tell me about these leads. I didn't even care about the comp. It was just leads. Like, tell me about the leads. And uh, he was like, yeah, let, let me get you s- some in your hands. And they were they were your leads. That was the first That was the that's first crazy. Facebook leads I ever ran. That's crazy. So, Boom. <laughs> that's wild. So. Um, How were they? This has been years ago. This has been years ago, bro. Um, my first batch, I bought the minimum order, which I think was fifteen at the time. Probably. No, they're fifteen dollars, twenty minimum. Twenty order. leads, yeah. Twenty leads yeah. minimum order. Yeah. I sold two. Okay. Off my first batch. Yeah. Um, I bought another batch of twenty. I sold one. And you're probably like, and I'm like, what? The? I thought these leads were good. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, what's going on? And yeah. I was like, because I was having a problem getting people on the phone, and. I talked to this uh, top producer at the company, right? This is at the end of 2018. I okay. just, I'm, I'm like just transitioning in, coming in, starting to transfer all my contracts over. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm talking to this top producer and he ends up meeting me. And this is where the, the, the fundamentals come in. Yep. And, and I'm telling him about like what I'm doing and you know, what my performance is. And I'm like, and he, he had, come to Dallas, you know, he flew in, he got leads for three weeks, stockpiled them, ran them in three days, and he sold like 36,000 AP in three days, two and a half days. And I was like, dude, I can't even sell 3,000 AP in a month, bro, with the, with the leads. What are you doing? Like, you, yeah. there is a secret to this sauce. Give it, you know? And that's what they're thinking right now. Yeah. Give it. Yeah, give me the secret sauce, bro. Like, don't stop stop jerking me around. Yeah. And um, you know, he he's like, Hey, let me ask some some questions, Greg. He's like, Hey, uh, hey, how many leads are you buying each week? Right? And and he, as he's asking me questions, dude, I'm tap dancing. I'm just like I'm like 
trying to answer as best I can without seeming like I'm a piece of shit. But I was being a piece of shit. <laughs> so I'm like, well, you know, I bought leads like a week and a half ago. And, you know, I'm still calling them. I'm trying to get a return off of them before I buy them again. He was like, okay, talk to me about your dial days. Like, how are your dial days? You, 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 you like locking that day, you're doing two, two, two dial days a week. And I was like, you know, I'm down, I'm dialing every day. I'm dialing at different times because I'm trying to see what's the best time for these people that they would be available. All right, all right. So you said, you said the right amount of appointments a week? Mm. You know, how many points you said a week? I was like, I was like, last week I said three. I sat with one and sold it, but I sat, sat, you know, I said like three. The, I, I shot once and I made it. I like 100%. Yeah, yeah I'm 100%. I'm 100% closing ratio. And he was like, uh huh. He's like, how about, how about training? You go into training each week? Mm. And I was like, man, you know, I've been in the industry for almost two years now like a year and a half or it's I actually have that time of year. So I've been in the industry for a year. I've, I've been to a, a bunch of different, you know, trainings and all the stuff I know. I was like, you know, I went to this IUL training. I didn't know that what an IUL was, you know, I didn't know we could do investments like that. It's pretty cool. You know, I went to that the other week and he was like, huh? Okay. And he like looks at me and just straight up serious as hell. He's like, dude, Greg, I know what your problem is. You think you're special and you're not. Mm. And he, and like, mm. yeah. Now, I'm a confident person. I got a little bit of a and a big dude and a big dude, and I got this person across for me. Jeez, literally being like telling me you're not special. But he was right, man. It was what you needed to hear at that time. It was exactly yeah. what I need, and yeah. it changed the di- it changed the pro- the trajectory of where I was. Do you going. remember what you thought when you said that? <laughs> yeah, I was like this motherfucker, <laughs> like this. <laughs> I was, and I was like, t- I was literally taken aback, and I was like, Who "Oh my god!" In gosh. the f is this guy? Yeah, talking to me. How well like did you know this guy? This is the first time I ever met him in person. Oh, first time. I'd never met this guy before in person. Like, this dude's a dick. Yeah, and like, and like, we talked on the phone one time previously. Wow. <laughs> so, but it, dude, but he was he was not wrong. He was not wrong. He was right. And so he and he basically he broke down all the fundamentals right there in front of me. He mm. said, "Dude, I'm able to do what I can do because I'm not special either." And I realized that I invest wow. in leads every single week. That forces me to make sure that I run the leads every week appropriately to the best of my ability so I'm not leaving money behind. Mm. I structure my schedule appropriately and I control it because this is a business, it's not a hobby. He was like, and this, this is actually, um, this was the Saturday before Thanksgiving in November uh, 2018. Wow. And he was like, for instance, um, this next th- Thursday is Thanksgiving. He was like, that's my dial day. What do you think I'm gonna be doing on Thanksgiving. Mm. He was like, I'm going to be dialing. Wow. You know why? Because everyone's home and people will answer. And when they answer, they're going to be like, you're working on Thanksgiving? And I'll be like, yeah, my boss, he's just making me dial. <laughs> like, I want to I go spend time with my family. He was like, I'm going to guilt them and I'm going to set an awesome weekend. He was like, you know how many people are going to be like, it's Thanksgiving. I've got to spend time with my family. This, that, the other. He was like, I don't give a fuck. It's a business. Get mm. to work. Right? He was like, you know, he's like, I train. I go to every single training because I can always learn something from somebody. Wow. And the second I stop going to training, I think I know it all. I'm going to start going backwards. Gosh. He's like, I set 30 appointments a week. No matter what, it controls my schedule. It, it makes sure that I get the I know my metrics because I know if I do 30 appointments, I'm sitting with 20, I'm selling 10, no matter what. Mm. Like worst case scenario. He's like, those are my metrics. He was like, I do better now, but those were my beginning metrics. Wow. And then he showed me his phone, and he was like, also, I set my goals. He's like, do you set your goal? What's your goal? I was like, oh, I don't know. And he showed me his phone. And on his phone, he had wrote down on a piece of paper, I'm going to sell $400,000 of annual premium in the year of 2018. Wow. And issue pay, 400000 He had taken a picture of it. It was his phone's lock screen and his home screen and he was like i see this every single time i look at my phone it reminds me of what i'm supposed to be doing he said, this is my first year full year in insurance he started the year previous same 
It was his first full year. That was one of my questions. I was be like, how long has he been in it? Yeah. 600,000 that year. Over 600,000 a wow. year. Wow. And so I like, I, I, I was dumbfounded because I was looking at this guy. It's like he was not special by any stretch of imagination. Yeah. You know? And I'm like, dude, it's just an insane work ethic. And it's just following these fundamentals. And I just, I, I, I listened to what he said Gosh. and I applied it. And so I literally, I went home that night. I wrote down on two pieces of paper, I'm going to do 400,000 in, in the year 2019. Issue paid. Boom, boom. I took a picture of it, put it on my lock screen, my home screen. And I put one on the refrigerator. I put one by the my bed on the wall. So I saw it every night when I, uh, before I went to bed. Saw it every morning when I woke up. And that's where the power of ma- I may start with the power of manifestation, active visualization is is that law of attraction piece that is very important. And this is a, this is a advanced shit. Okay, people don't mm-hmm. believe this. They're like, oh, it's hokey, whatever. You're, I'm telling you, if you go write out your goal and you put it somewhere where you see it every single day, no question, no question about it. You're gonna get if you don't get, if you don't hit it, you're gonna be really damn close to it. And you got to make it something uncomfortable. So like 2018, that year, I sold between all four companies. I sold $75,000 of life insurance premium. I made about $60,000 that year, Jeez. okay? 2019, I sold 425,000. I was the same person. Yeah. I didn't change, all I do is I changed my thoughts. I changed my mindset, I changed my behaviors, and I did the fundamentals. I took my ego out of the business. Wow. And I was just like, I'm just going to follow the, I started going to every training, whether I wanted to go or not, Yeah, dude, I was going and it kept me in the right mindset. And that's, and then people fall off the wagon way yes. too easily. They're like, well, they, they, it's like, it's like the person I'll, I'll liken it to going to the gym, right? Cause I love going to the gym, obviously. Yes. Um, you know, people will start going to the gym. It's, it's almost January 1st. Yep. A lot of people are going to be in the gym on January 1st, and they're going to go for le- a, a month or less because they're Correct. going to expect to get massive results. And when they don't see it, yep. they're going to quit. You're going to expect that you're going to go to training for the next three weeks. And when you don't feel like it's a benefit to you, yep. you're going to quit and stop going. And you're going to make an excuse like, well, I got to go pick up my dry cleaning or my dog got hit by a car or whatever Ooh. it is. You're going to make an excuse. When you make a commitment and decision to do something and you remove all other possibilities, yes. then you, you there's something that happens with your discipline when you do that consistently. Mm-hmm. And it's a compounding effect. Now, it takes time, but what you'll see at the end of 30 days, then the end of 60 days, it's a massive difference. Yeah. Like the growth that you did in the 30 days from, from day one through 30, and then the growth you did from day 31 to 60, massively different. And mm-hmm. then day 61 to 90 massively different it's like a compounding effect yeah and huh. if you can stick with those fundamentals for three months yeah going you know going to trainings reading daily tracking your metrics appropriately like actually tracking no one likes to yes. track because it's like holding a mirror up mm-hmm. and you can see like i'm working really hard and then you're looking at your dials that you did for that day and you're like right. dude you you weren't working that hard it's so it's so much holds you accountable so much more when you physically see it like that oh my gosh yeah yes and so um you know controlling your schedule i i, I can tell you right now um I'm willing to bet 90% of the agents in the industry do not have a calendar scheduled on a daily basis where like every, I'm talking everything scheduled. When do you go to the gym? When are you eating? When do you, when are you doing studies? When are your meetings? When are you reading? What time are you going to bed? When are you going to spend time maybe calling a friend to get some social interaction, right? I color code my my calendar based off of what bucket it fills. So it could be like, hey, red is going to be work professional, blue is uh, my my mental. So if I'm learning something, I'm reading. Purple is spiritual for me. I like that. Uh, orange is gym, so it's like physical, and then uh, yellow is social because I'm I, I'm very extroverted. I like like talking to people pumps me up. Like yeah. it gives me energy. That's cool. That's so cool. I want to, I have, and sometimes I may do social with work. So I may, my social may be talking to one of my agency owners where I can sit down and be like, yo bro, let's chat and chat for a little bit, but then also get yes. work done. Yes. So, and I schedule all that out. Yes. 
Also, guys, can we turn some AC on in here? It's getting freaking hot. Okay. Uh, hey, he hasn't started sweating yet, but I'm I'm starting to. Man, you get under these lights, you guys come in town, you hang out. Yeah. You get in the hot hot seat, really. What we it's can. like it's like being in a tanning bed right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, dude, this is man, this is fire. I could go for days. Um, I love the part that you're talking about because I know that everybody can adopt it, and I want to get into like some of the other stuff later. Um, even agency building, you know, et cetera. The back to the like you started with battle drills mm -hmm. and then you know we're st this even even middle way past middle of the podcast we're talking about battle drills we're talking about fundamentals yeah. we're talking about discipline you know we're talking about showing up and doing these things and getting good at these things let's highlight some of those a little bit more so you talked about some of the specific things that that you did based on that conversation you had with that gentleman that you did that you went from 75k to 425k yeah. and you just got good at Boom, I'm doing this. Let's talk about the, the fundamentals a little bit more for the agents that right now, um, they lack the fundamentals. They Some of them know it. Some of them don't know it. Some of them think they're doing good. Well, also, why do we give ourselves like this false feeling that we're just like doing better than we are? You know, like all the time, like, you know, money, physical appearance, any like salesman you know acumen all of it i mean th th this i could go down the rabbit hole with that i think that's just a societal thing okay. i think society this has been an intentional deconstruction of our society for the past 20 30 years yep um you know with uh, with the the whole like everyone like the inclusion of everything you know hey everyone's a winner you know, like you showed up, you got 10th place and just like your 10th was the last. And it's like, you got a trophy, Johnny. And it's yes. like, well, it's so it's like, dude, you can just show up and get a trophy. It's like, well, I'm going to show up and be an entrepreneur in right. life insurance. And I'm just going to show up to training and never put any effort in. And I'm still going to make money. No, you're not, bro. No, you know, this is, this is, um, you got to eat, you got to eat what you kill. And this right. is, a, this is a hunting ground. I mean, you may fall into 40, 50 grand, like the rest of the industry, but yeah. Dude, who wants to? Who got signed up for this freaking thing to make 40, 50 grand? Yeah, no, not when six figures is so easy. Correct. It is so easy. Correct. Would you just follow the simple system? Yeah. It, it, it's it, you know, it's effort though. It, it, input will always equal output. And here's here's the secret though. Mm. Here's the secret. Yep. Is that people think, um, you know, you think, you know, if somebody does a poor job. What would the you know poor input? What would the rewards be? You know, would it be poor rewards? You'd think that, right? Yeah. But it's not. It's zero rewards. You do a poor job, you get fired. You do a poor job in your True. relationship, you get dumped. You do a poor job. That's good. You're, you're right. You're you're gone. Right. Yes. So you're doing a poor job in insurance. Poor job in your health, you get fat. You get fat. Whatever. Poor input is is rock bottom. Mm. Right. So then after poor is like good okay so you have good performance and you think well good performance is going to equal a good output good results no nope. it equals poor results hmm. it equals poor you know why because there's so many people that you're competing against this is the 80 percent a lot of good there's a lot of good and it's just good enough and there's a lot of people in a lot of different companies a lot of positions and all industries around the world that are doing a good job, yeah. and guess what? They're getting passed up for promotion. They're not getting. They're not getting raises. They're not getting paid what they feel they should be paid. Mm -hmm. It's because they're just doing a good job. Yeah. They're just meeting the standard. So good. So after that, you have like great performance, and you'd think see that. now this is going to start catching up. Well, great performance gets good output. The great input is going to get good output. So this is when you start to actually have, and, and honestly, this is the entry level six six figures mm. for, for yes. like beginning level six figures. This is good, okay? But just past that grade, this is like the phenomenal level. Yeah. And you know what this crazy thing about phenomenal level? This is where it's even better is that it has all the rewards, has all the output. You get to a phenomenal level, you will have everything you ever wanted. All of the rewards, the I mean, I'm, I'm talking like it's the inverse mm. where you have, you know, 80, 90 percent of people on the on the input scale. Yes. Getting like. Five percent of the output. Well, you have like five percent on the top of the input getting like 
eighty percent of the rewards. Yes. All day. And here's the so thing: good. anybody can get to the phenomenal level. I don't care who you are. Yeah. Everyone has potential is unknown and unlimited. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone can do it. Well, and you, you, you like even when you did four hundred twenty-five k in twenty nineteen. Mm-hmm. In the moment, it probably felt phenomenal. Oh yeah. It doesn't feel phenomenal to you anymore. No, it is not. Not even close. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like that's the type of individual you are. Like you are now seeing the bigger picture. Mm-hmm. You're thinking bigger. You're doing more. You're surrounding yourself with an incredible team. You, you're you're someone that um. Mark my words, you're someone that's going to come in the insurance industry and within 10 years of knowing nothing about insurance, we'll have a freaking gigantic company doing eight figures a year in revenue, helping thousands of people. Yeah. You know? And the, But that's also what you see. If maybe I do, and, I, and I do see that. It's I do see that. And wild. I got a lot of big, I got a big problem. And, and I've, I started ever since, you know, I'll tell you when I, when I did that, when I did that, um, wrote out that goal for 20 at the at, man, it was that I remember getting home that night so vividly and like being like, Hey man, this clown showed me his phone and he's got this goal and he says it's work. I'm just going to do and it. He just right? smacked me in the face. Yeah. He just smacked me in the face. So I'm going to do it. So I wrote it out. I was like, and, and if anything, I'm going to prove him wrong. Right. Yeah. That's proven right. <laughs> prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Start 2023. This is going to be my year. This is how much you want to write. You never wrote 50,000. Yes. Tell you, put it on, you're going to write 400,000 in the 2023. Put it on your phone. Don't ever change it the entire year. Let's see where you get. Let's go. So, um, mm. say that again. 2023, prove me wrong. Write it down. Write down what you want to accomplish, what you want to write by the end of the year. I don't care what your level is. I don't care when you watch this. You can watch this in February and you can still do this. I'm telling you, it drives your actions. And so the way this works is that it's actually, one, you have to have some feeling, okay? So like you look at it, your conscious mind looks at it, and as your conscious mind looks at it, imagine that you actually accomplish it. And that should produce feelings within you. You should be like, man, what happens if I actually do this? Like, imagine the money going into your bank account. Imagine what you're going to be able to do with that money. Imagine the accolades you'll get. Imagine the awards you'll win. Imagine the agents you'll be able to help because mm-hmm. you learned so much experience along the way. Like, go through this and actually get some feeling. And what that does is going to lock this image, these images into your subconscious mind. Now, your subconscious mind has access to what's called your reticular activating system, your RAS. Your RES is basically a filter for your mind. And what it does is it is it filters out all the BS. So like right now, like your brain at any given moment is taking in thousands of points of information from what you see, the color on the walls, the temperature, um, the pressure in the air, everything, right? The sounds in the room, the sounds outside, the cars they're going by. Everyone has an RES, anything that's important to you because it filters out everything except for things that are important to you. When you do this, what you're doing is you're telling the filter that this is important to you. Hey, this is important for me to hit this amount. And so your subconscious mind is extremely powerful. And what it's going to do is it's going to find every single potential way, whether it's like, hey, I think I need to like do this today. You'll just like get these inklings or like urges to get something done and you will because your RES is kind of driving the vehicle at that point. Um, and, and, and for those of you who don't want to know what an RES or have never heard of this, uh, simple case in point, have you ever bought a car that the second you buy the car, you see it everywhere? Yeah, now? correct. Correct. Same make and model, same color. you like, yes. dude, it's not that people all bought the same car at the same time you did. It's that that car is now important to you. Yes. Same thing with like children. So people are like, oh man, I'm a tough, I'm a, I'm a deep sleeper. No one can wake me up. I don't care if you're a man or a woman, father or mother, the second you bring your baby home, every single little movement wakes you up. Yeah. Instantly. That's good. So so that's what it does for you. And so when I when I did it for twenty nineteen, I realized that the power of the law of attraction, which brought it back to the first time I was like, dude, I've done this before in my life, which even created more belief in me that this mm-hmm. is a real thing. Like I've already done this and I just didn't even realize it. Yes. So now I set goals all the time. I do. I literally write out my manifestations daily. I have a manifestation journal daily that I write out. 
where I'm like, I'm going to do this in the industry. I'm going to do this in the industry. I'm going to do this for individual agents. I want to make sure that I'm going to have this much staff, et cetera. Like I'm visualizing all this every single day. Like, 100%. And it's, I'm telling you, it's important. 100%. My wife sees me right in my, yeah, in my goal book every day, yeah. you know. But back to everything you're saying. I mean, um, 15 years old, uh, we had a guy that couldn't play, and I, I wrote out, like, I made a decision. I'm like, I'm going to score 40 tonight because our best player is not playing. This is a Christian school. I scored 42. Um, later, 20 years old. I'm like, I'm going to make six figures my first year selling insurance because my dad's like, dude, you should. Cold calling, cold door knocking, 35%, no leads. 117 grand you know like every step of the way it's like dude it's so freaking powerful when it, you when you is. commit it you write it down you see it and then you do whatever it takes to make it happen and it's 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 it's, it's gonna happen it is it's wild. I, I can guarantee you and, and that's why i say it's advanced level shit because people think it's so simple that they're like this yeah. is too simple no way this works Correct. and so you you almost like just throw it out of your mind and you don't even try it yeah, because it's really not like it's, it's, it's not really, that advanced. But but no. by you saying it is, maybe they'll actually like freaking take it seriously. It, it's like it's this is has to do with like metaphysics and the metaphysical science and playing and and um, if you actually read, there's a really great book by uh, Michael Lozier called The Law of Attraction, mm -hmm. and he actually discusses how the atoms in your brain can actually change their charge from positive to negative depending upon your emotion. You cannot be negative and positive at the same time. You can't be grateful and be negative at the same time, mm. right? You can't like have a great time and also be frowning. It just doesn't work. And so yeah. what happens is when you're when you have positive emotions or you are you thinking positively, your the atoms in your brain will take on a positive charge and it acts as a magnet and mm. it actually attracts more positivity to your life, more positive people. Like, have you ever met with somebody where, like, you almost felt put off by them? And it's and it's because it, it's, like, the opposite. If you get with somebody that's super negative and you're positive, either it changes their charge or if they're refusing to change, it's like trying to put two mags together with the opposite ends or it pushes them away. It's the same thing. Like, we're mm. all – we are all connected. It's the universe, you know? Yeah. We're all one. So – Yeah. I know I'm talking crazy right now, but I'm telling Dude. you, it's – shit's real. Dude's a wacko that's going to make you a bunch of money. That okay. shit's real. That's right. That's all it is. Okay. <laughs> Dude, it's so good. I, it's nice to have people on here that, um, yeah, that, I mean, that have been through the same stuff, believe the same stuff, and are willing to get on camera and be like, dude, this worked for me. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you'll do it, but if you do, it will work for you too. You know, like it's powerful, man. It's cool. Um, and you're also doing a lot now. I like, talk about what you're doing now. Like you're, you're helping agents, you know, you're not yeah. just personally producing. Yeah. So, um, I don't really personally produce much. I do every once in a while. Um, but I, I ended up, I, I started my own IMO and I didn't want to, I'll be yeah. honest. I didn't want to. Um, I just wanted to help agents. So I, I, I'd broken some records and, and, you know, I sold a lot and I did it to really, help agents and create a duplicatable system where I can like, and I can teach anybody how to sell. It's not hard to sell, right? Mm -hmm. It's very simple concepts. But um, I got to a point where everywhere I was at, it was just like hitting an opposition, hitting a wall. Mm. And so, um, you know, this is my belief, is I believe I believe in leadership, you know, yeah. and obviously it's, it's a big, it's a big thing for me because of my military experience. No doubt. I believe in leadership. I believe in making people better people in every aspect of their life. Yes. I don't care about just making you a better producer. I don't care about just making you a better insurance agent. I care about actually like, I want when you come and work with me, Yes. whether you're in my company or not, but you come and talk to me, I make your life better in some way, shape That's or right. form, right? right? So I have people that reach out to me about workout advice and I help them. And I, I'm not like, oh, well, you know, I, I also do physical fitness training and like, and I, I'm not charging you. Just, I'm going to tell you what I'm doing. I'm going to tell you what works for me. And if you mm -hmm. apply it, awesome. Um, you know, I have agents that reach out to me that ask me about, hey, I see that you've done this program or I've seen you've done these leads or I've seen that you did this much in production before. How did you do that? And I'll help them, right? Um, I just want to help agents. And so it came to, it just came to a head where I was like, I got to just create this my own. Yeah. And so I, that's where that's where I came up with uh, Delta Financial, which a lot of people are like think Delta is more like a military thing. It's it's the army, like what Delta Force, and it's not. It's actually the Delta sign, which is the Greek Delta sign, which is the difference between or the change between two things. Mm. 
And that's why that's my saying cool. is to be the difference. It's to that's be the awesome. difference in other people's lives, to I love that. be the difference in the insurance industry. Um, yes. And so I, I, I feel that, you know, I've, when agents come and you know be a part of the team, uh, we're very selective. We we don't hire everybody. I'm yeah. not I'm not like oh I'm taking every single agent. Like well, you don't want a bunch of freaking draining negative people <sighs> that won't work. Exactly. Like that won't work with you. Yeah, and and it's also it's I mean it goes with the brand right. And so um, if you're not going to will, be willing to apply what I'm teaching you and you yes. don't get better, then it looks like I can't make people better. So. If you're not going to do it, 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 it. Don't waste. I won't waste your time. You don't waste mine. It's that simple. That's great. So, um, how do they learn more? Reach out, talk to you. Like, what do you recommend they do when they think 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 about doing? That? You know, honestly, um, ch check out my Instagram. Okay, uh, it's Gregory A Birch underscore. Check out my Instagram. I um, just tagged it a second ago. Gregory A Birch underscore. Yeah. And then also my website. I tell people all the time: go check out the website. You know, we're all big, we're big on culture, core values, um, the vision, the mission of the company, what we're trying to do here. Yep. Um, go check it out. It's deltafinanciallife.com. Deltafinanciallife.com. You have a, uh, dude, you put out some good content too, man. You know what I mean? Like you've got, you sort of, you, you sort of put out some reels, like you got some good content on your Instagram. Like yeah, I, do, uh, I do a lot of reels. You're active. Yeah. You're building a brand. Yeah. You're also invest in stuff. Like you're a part of other communities and uh, masterminds and like you yeah. you know you, you you also invest in your personal development mm -hmm. as well as anybody I've seen and dude I respect that because I've invested hundreds of thousands the last several years in similar stuff it pays off man dude it pays off so much you have to in it's order to be the scary, best you gotta though. invest bro yeah. it, to be the best you gotta invest you got to I'm still in that one okay I'm yeah. still in that one be the best you gotta invest dude be the best you gotta invest entrepreneurship is like a, it's it's like a challenging uh, path you're walking. Yeah. Okay. You're walking this path, and it sucks at the beginning. And the path is difficult to walk. It's treacherous. It's like those awkwardly large rocks where like you keep twisting your ankles. It's like steep inclines, all kinds yep. of. And, and like it, the the surrounding area looks like garbage. You know, just like just desolate, right? And as you get through the path, it looks nicer and better and better and better, and it gets it's a nicer walk. There's still some challenges along the way, but you start to enjoy yourself. The problem is that there's no shortcutting. There's it doesn't it doesn't wind around. You can't like take a trek through the woods. Now people make you think that you can, and mm -hmm. they'll try to trick you, but you can't. The only thing that you can do is you can you can have points of contact with people that are further ahead on the road than you, that have yeah. been on that path longer than you. And they can That's mentor right. you through the path. They can be like, hey, watch out for this, that, the other. And it will actually expedite your travel time. 100%. You have to have mentors. Now, if you're brand new in insurance, if you're your first month, don't get a mentor. Like, you need to focus on following some fundamentals. Do what I told you in this video. Do that for six months to a year. Go crush it. After a year of being in the business, if you don't have a mentor, you need to start looking at getting a mentor. Mm -hmm. You need to start paying for professional development services, personal development services. Right. Like it's going to take you to the next level. To be the best you gotta invest. To be the best you gotta invest. That's boom, bro. I love it. Man, thank you for being a part of this and being yeah. here in Springfield. You are phenomenal. Um, you guys need to look him up, follow him. Whether you need somewhere to work, man, you gotta look this cat up. You gotta follow what he's doing. He, he is the real deal. He is someone that I can see of everything I've seen and all the conversations we've had, interactions we've had, is someone of ethics and integrity. I love and respect the military background, love and respect the hustle of working out and getting jacked. Um, I've been working out like I, the first 8% conference in 2018 in Nashville. I was not working out every day. Mm -hmm. I feel like a hypocrite. I went on vacation right after in Jamaica and ever since then I've worked out multiple times every single week. And I just, dude, I just, it's, it makes you a different person. It does. That's, the that is the discipline. best. That is the best way to remove depression and anxiety yes. from your life is yes. working out. Is the best for your mind. Like, did, did you hear this story? So, so, and there's a lot of a lot of wacky stuff, right? But th there's one piece that was incredible. Andrew Tate, right? He's everywhere. Yeah. And what, what do you love him or hate him? Who cares, right? Th this piece is the same with Trump. Tate, he had somebody email him and like, hey, dude, I'm thinking about committing suicide. And he said, do yourself a favor. Before you do, 
Go to the gym every day for 30 days. Keep emailing me on your progress and what's happening. And, and we'll talk and still and we'll see if you still feel like committing suicide in a month. Mm-hmm. Two weeks in, the person emailed and said, dude, I have newfound confidence. I'm a different person. I love myself. I'm feeling better. I'm, you know what I mean? I'm, it's like, you're right. I'm telling you. Yeah. I've, I've, dude, I've had some dark times in my life. I actually, I had some times with, I, I'm PTSD. I was oh. on medication. I came off of it through exercise and Good. Good for you. Um, being just very consistent with discipline. But, um, dude, I had some, like, times where suicidal ideations and um, struggled with, with bouts of depression. Mm. And so uh, I can tell you that when I'm in the gym and I'm, it, it's a stress relief, um, yes. it, it actually helps with my conceptualization as well because I problem solve while I'm in the gym. I, I usually have a podcast on or I'm listening to audiobook. Yeah. But I'm thinking, I'm thinking about content. I'm totally. Thinking, I'm thinking about what I'm going to do in the next day, podcast I'm going to record, etc. Yes. Dude, so good. Well, well, next time you come up, we're going to get into a little bit more of that because um, yeah. I think that's strong and people need to hear that message and mm-hmm. it's important and I appreciate you being here and appreciate you being on the Power Player Podcast. Hey, it's my pleasure, brother. Thank You're you. You're awesome. Check out Greg Burt. Thank you for listening to Power Player Podcast. I can't promise every interview will be as freaking good as this one. But either way, we'll see you next time. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there, click on it, see you in there. When I first joined and decided to kind of jump in, I was really, it was kind of one foot in, one foot out. And I remember being out in the field, I went to my first home, my second home, my third home, and it was by the end of that,